So you'll probably hear because you're thinking about getting a used Subaru. Fortunately for you, I'm going to be creating a list of issues and concerns before you get that used Subaru Forester. Now in this list, I tried my best to rank it from the easiest and cheapest to fix to the most expensive and complicated to fix, but I'll leave all the fixes and solutions down in the description below. With all that being said, let's go ahead and get started. Now the first issue on this list is that you want to make sure that the AC actually works. If the AC doesn't work for your Subaru model, it's probably because the AC clutch has gone bad. But fortunately, it's a relatively easy and cheap fix. Essentially what happens over time is that the AC clutch gets warped and comes out a bit too much, preventing AC from working correctly. What you're going to need to do is take out the AC clutch. When you do take the AC clutch out, you're going to notice two shims. You're going to need to take out the shim and then put everything back in reverse order and that should hopefully fix your AC problems. Now the next item on this list is going to be what you call a bender bolt or a union bolt. Now this bender bolt feeds oil directly to your turbo so you definitely want to get this checked out if your check engine lights come on. Now these bender bolts they actually have a little filter inside them and eventually over time these filters get clogged up and that prevents oil from getting to your turbo effectively. Now in this case you can either replace the bender bolts themselves or remove the filters from the bender bolts. Regardless of what you choose to do this should help alleviate the check engine light code. Unfortunately if that doesn't help that probably means that one of your solenoids or sensors are going bad. Now the next item on this list is going to be the super annoying wind noise from the wind gussets and essentially over time the wind gussets gap out a bit too much allowing wind noise to get into your cabin and that's what causes the problem. I'll go ahead and save you guys some time. I already made a video about this super cheap and easy fix so definitely feel free to check it out right here. Number three on this list is going to be the secondary air pump replacement or delete. For this specific issue, three parts can go wrong. The secondary air pump and two of the valves that feed air into the heads of your engine. If you decide to replace these kits, they can run up to a thousand bucks just to get it done. Fortunately, if you decide to just go ahead and delete it, it will run you about 30 bucks to get the plates. What you're going to need to do is take off your exhaust system, your cross pipe, your mid pipe, your up pipe, your down pipe, just to be able to access where you need to put the block off plates on. You're also going to need to take off your intercooler for this. This might take several hours, but honestly, it's a lot better than paying several thousand bucks for it to fail eventually in the next hundred thousand miles. Number four on this list is going to be replacing the valve cover gaskets. Now this issue is common on all cars, but because of the boxer engine layout, it's a lot more common on Subarus. Fortunately, it's a pretty simple Simple fix. It will cost you about $80 for parts, but once you do get the parts, it's a pretty simple job to do, so you definitely want to make sure this gets taken care of. Number five on this list is going to be the EVAP system replacement or delete. So essentially what happens is that charcoal canister goes bad and it starts to leak gasoline fumes into the atmosphere. Unfortunately, replacing this charcoal canister can run you up to about four or five hundred bucks just to get that replacement part. If you decide to just completely delete this system, it'll be a lot cheaper. You just have to make sure you have the right equipment to delete the codes. Number seven on this list is going to be the timing belt replacement kit. For those that don't know, the EJ25 is an interference engine, so if your timing belt fails on you, you're gonna have a bad time. Subaru themselves do recommend that you replace the timing belt kit every 100,000 miles. So if you're gonna buy a used Subaru or a Forester, you definitely wanna make sure this has been done. The kits themselves can run up to several hundred dollars, but I really don't recommend you guys buying cheap parts from your local auto parts store. This part is super, super important for the engine, so I definitely recommend you getting the best quality that you can. And in my case, I got the Eisen kit that was about 250 and it was basically because I didn't want to go cheap on this it wasn't really a risk that I was willing to take besides that the job itself is a really easy fix so if you're mechanically inclined you should be able to take care of this no problem number eight and the last item on this list is going to be the head gasket leaks now if you're thinking about getting a Subaru model with the EJ25 engine you definitely want to make sure this has been placed already as it's super super common for the non turbo version and it's because they use a head gasket that actually deteriorates over time now if you're thinking about getting the turbo version of ej25 it's not as common on these turbo versions but 
if the previous owner had too much fun with the motor, you definitely want to get this checked out too. Now you can easily check for internal head gasket leaks by checking the oil cap feeler. If there's any white or milky substance on the lid, unfortunately, that means there's probably some internal head gasket leaks. To check the external leaks, it's a little bit more complicated. You're gonna have to get down and dirty, but you can easily check the driver's side by going down under the car and looking for the head gaskets. Unfortunately, if you wanna check the passenger side, it's a little bit more complicated because you're gonna need to take off the cross pipe, the mid pipe, the down pipe, the up pipe, just to be able to access where you can see the head gaskets. But besides that, those are the main signs of a head gasket failure. And that pretty much concludes my list. I do have one last item and it's that you're gonna notice that a lot of the cheaper solutions requires you to delete the check engine light codes. So if you're gonna go this route, I definitely recommend you getting a cop access port or a Texas cable like the ones that I have here. The cop access port cables can run you about $700 and the Texas cable will run you about $100. And if you're not comfortable about doing this yourself, you can always go to your tuner to get the codes deleted for you. And with that being said, I'll list a lot more information down below in the description. That way you can find more information about these issues. So in conclusion, should you get a Shrubru? Well, that really just depends. If you're not mechanically inclined, I really don't recommend you getting a Subaru just because of all these common issues. But if you're up to the task or know what you're doing, I definitely recommend it. I really do love my Forester, so that's really all the advice I'll give you guys. That really concludes this list. I really hope this video helped you make the right decision. If it did, please feel free to leave a like or a comment down below. And if you're interested about what's gonna be happening next to XT, the 86, the 986, or the Z, please feel free to subscribe so that you get notified anytime I release videos on these projects. So until then, I'll see you guys next time. Peace.